everyone. I'm Yolanda Newsdorfer. I'm a mixed media artist. Welcome to art class. Today we're going to look at painting leaves, simple leaves, uh, repetitive patterns, a little wet and wet technique. It's mainly aimed for beginners, but um, you can always use extra practice no matter what level you're at. So let's jump in. All right, today we're gonna to talk about easy ways to do leaves. We are going to work with some Daniel Smith colors. Today I have undersea green, green gold, one of my favorite colors. It's um, a yellowy green. We have Hansa yellow medium and a new gamboge. So we'll use those four colors. I have an assortment of brushes because I'm not quite sure which brushes I'm going to use today. Um, my favorites are the Windsor Newton Cotman, they're very reasonable for the price. And the Princeton brushes, I like the way they hold the tip. So um, we'll see which ones we use today. I have my water, my paper towel, 140 pound watercolor paper in a sketchbook. This is just a random um, sketchbook that I found at art supply store. And then I have my butcher tray with all my colors on it. But like I said, we're only gonna use those four today. Okay, so we're gonna start off with some simple olive leaves. I'm gonna get my paintbrush wet and go ahead and start with my green gold because it's the lighter of the two greens. And we're going to do some ovals. And they're going to be long and slender ovals of different varying lengths. So leaves are basically just a repeated pattern. So you'll see this is just the same shape over and over again. And then this one, maybe it's gonna branch off. It has a little leaf there a little leaf there. All right, and then we'll make one at the top because we usually end with a leaf right at the top. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go into our undersea green while we have wet paint here and just lay in some color right into the wet watercolor paint. Now we're gonna vary this a little bit so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to leave the center a little bit open. So I'm not going to paint that as much. I'm going to take my little paintbrush and wet that and soften these edges. But still leave the center just a little bit open. Then I'm going to take my bigger brush and the same thing over here. And then a clean wipe it off on a paper towel, a clean paintbrush, and go in with slightly wet and just soften the edges a little bit. So super simple. Again on this side, make sure this is clean. You don't want too much water because if you have too much water it's just going to to uh, make a mess, actually. All right, and now I'm going to bring this line down a little bit. I'm gonna darken up the stem a little bit. And this one we're gonna alternate, well, we're gonna change up a little bit. I'm not gonna paint the whole side. Put a little bit more paint in there. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So you can just go ahead and do your leaves. Leaves are always different for each one. Depends on how the light hits it. I'm gonna pull, what I'm doing is I'm taking the paint off the top. And this is just with that wet, clean paintbrush. So I'm taking, I wipe it on the paper towel and I pull the color right off. So play around with taking paint off, 
putting paint in, working the wet on wet, and you could do this over and over and over again, all the way across, just to see and learn from your leaf making. That one's gonna be dark. That one's gonna be dark. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little darker color in some of these while it's still wet. And if it has dried a little bit, it's no big deal. Because that's what watercolor is supposed to do. You're supposed to put in all these different layers. And that's what makes it look good. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. I'm just softening up some edges, pulling up some of the color so they're not so harsh on the edges. And one more. And you'll see that I'm not too precise about it. I think that's the nice thing about leaves, is that you can just lay in some color and go with it. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush off. So the next one we'll do is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus are a little bit more round. So I'm going to water down my undersea green and just make a very light wash. And eucalyptus are Oops, let's actually get some color on there. Around. I'm gonna I'm doing this with a size 10 brush. And this has a stem. But what is interesting about these round ones is that when it turns, sometimes they look thin like that, and then sometimes they are very round. So you need to alternate your shapes. We're gonna carry it up a little bit like this. I said a thin wash and I went ahead and kind of put it on a little thick anyway, didn't I? So that's the best thing about painting in a sketchbook is that it's just all practice. You can practice and practice and practice and then you'll get the hang of it and you just get better with time. So you can see that when you fiddle and just play with the different amount of water on your brush, that you can get different results between how thick the paint is, how watery the paint is. How much concentration you have in the paint. All right, so those are our eucalyptus leaves. So that's nice. We have a nice thin one in here. This is kind of a little bit thinner. This is laying flat. That's laying flat, that's laying flat. So we're gonna let that dry just a little bit because what I want to do is go in with a smaller brush and put a little bit of the, uh, the vein in there. So we'll let that dry just a second. All right, let's move on to um, a maple leaf. A maple leaf has, hmm, I wonder if we should try the flat with this one. The maple leaf has three sections and we're gonna do um, the yellows. So we're gonna do a little bit of Hansa yellow medium. I'm gonna move this here so maybe you guys could see paint. And then we'll also add a little bit of new gamboge. So I'm just um, getting these watered down just a little bit so that way I can go ahead and put my paintbrush right in there. All right, we're gonna take the lighter yellow. This is a cooler yellow, the Hansa yellow medium. And we will go ahead 
and lay out the shape. So this one is gonna come off this way. This one is gonna come off straight and this one will come down here. So those are going to be your sections and each section just has some points coming off. So I'm just moving my brush back and forth to create some points. And then they're going to connect somewhere in the middle there. So this is just the foundation shape. And you don't want to have, um, you don't want to have space in the middle because then it's going to look like pine needles. So I'm going to fill it in. I've got one more here. I'm going to fill it in. Okay, just like that. So easy. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of new gamboge and put it a little bit in the center of our sections. And that is a very light wash of two colors. And we have to let that dry because we can't um, add any more paint to that or else it's just gonna get all muddled together. So we'll let that sit a second. Let's go back to our eucalyptus and throw in some veins on these flatter ones. It's a very um, light wash. And so you're just giving the hint of some veins I don't really know what happened with that one, but it still reads as eucalyptus leaves. This is a number four brush. I'm not gonna put veins in the flatter ones because they are sitting at a different angle. They're not flat, they're sitting at an angle, so you wouldn't really necessarily see the vein. And then you can add a little bit more color to the stem in some places, darken that up a little bit. When I add color to the stem, I go ahead and put my paintbrush directly in my color of paint. So what I mean is I don't have a wash here. I'm not getting it from the wash. When I do this stem, I'm getting directly, it's more concentrated there. So that's where I'm getting that from. And I'll just put a little touch here and there. And I think we'll be good. Darken up that leaf a little bit. So depending on the amount of paint that you have for your stem, you may have to do it a couple of times because it always dries lighter than what you put it, put it on. All right, we're gonna go back to our maple leaf. And I have new gamboge, a light wash of new gamboge on my um, paintbrush. And I'm just gonna to touch in here and there, just to darken it up a little bit. I do think that it needs a little bit of maybe brown. We might have to introduce a brown in there um, for the vein, but we're gonna let that dry as a second coat. While we're letting that dry, we're gonna take the Hansa Yellow Medium and we will look at doing a ginkgo leaf. So the ginkgo is like a fan and then it has a point at the end. So we'll put the point here and we'll go out. And then this is the fun part. This just goes around. Sometimes they have a crack in there. 
and then we're going to fill that in with color. So the thing about these leaves is they kind of speak for themselves. Your brain interprets the shapes and automatically says that it's a leaf. So you can get away with being loose. I'm gonna take a clean paintbrush and I'm gonna take a little bit of paint off so that way the top is highlighted a little bit. It's a very much lighter there. And then while this bottom is wet, we're gonna add a little bit of new gamboge in there. And I'm gonna take some water with the clean brush. And I'm gonna move this orange around so that way it just kind of melts into the yellow paint. I don't want to see a distinct line of the orange. Okay, let's let that dry. All right, so, so we need a little bit of a brown and I think we'll just use a little bit of burnt umber. All right, so this is again with the four. I'm gonna just take this, uh, you know what? This is gonna be too thick of a line. That's okay. So what you really, really want to do is wait until this, uh, this leaf is dry. And mine is bleeding just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of spreading out just a little bit, but that's all right. We learn from our mistakes. So I'm going to just throw some stems out like this. All right, so if it's not perfect, that's perfectly fine. That's why you're learning. All right, I'm going to throw some stems out this way. And I have a very, very light touch. I'm just trying to get the very tip of the paintbrush. All right, and it's all going to come down. And let's throw a stem down there. There we go. And the ginkgo also has a stem. Actually has a little tiny bit that comes this way. Okay, let's do this. Why don't we work on this ginkgo leaf and then that will dry up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and make a light wash with the Hansa Yellow. And I'm also going to throw in a little bit of burnt umber. I want it just a touch, with a, just a touch of brown, but very much a wash. And these ginkgo leaves have little lines that come out. So I'm just gonna barely touch the leaf. And then some of them go all the way to the top. So that will create just a hint of a little bit of striations. I'm gonna make a little bit darker version of that color and go ahead and make it a little bit darker towards the bottom. Okay. So let's go over some of this leaf again because I feel that it's needing a little bit of love. So this is 
a wash of the two of Hansa Yellow Medium and New Gamboge, about 50-50 of each. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it because I want a very transparent layer. And then I'm gonna go over the whole thing. But I'm going to try and not touch this um, stem too much. I can go ahead and touch just the edges just that might soften up what I have already painted, but I don't want to push too hard while I'm applying this second layer because you may reactivate that stem and then just mess it up. So I'm using a very light touch around the stem. So you can see I didn't really mess it up too much. I'm not really pulling, but I do need another layer in this leaf. So that's how we're going to fix it. There's so many tricks that you can do. So I say just continue to play and figure out your own tricks. Okay, that's a little bit better. And put a little bit more gamboge in there. And so feel free to even add a little bit red, go crazy. Okay, that looks much better. All right. If you enjoyed this lesson, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you want more in-depth video tutorials, please consider joining my Patreon membership.